What's up guys? It's been a while. Yeah, I, I left the, in my last video, I'm pretty sure I put in the description, see you in a year. And I think it's been a year, so here I am. But, um... <laughs> ignore that. Uh, I am back in Airsoft. My friends all pre-pressured me getting back into it and I immediately started spending way too much money on stuff. And I decided that I wanted to build a high kappa. I already had one of the Elite Force clocks, and they were, you know, it's, it's it's cool, but I wanted to build something flashy again. Normally, high kappas don't do anything for me anymore. I've built so many, seen so many, but I just wanted to try to be different. But I don't. I'm sure someone's already done this exact build, probably. But we're gonna start. Um, I'm not exactly done with it. This is just basically how I plan on running it for a while until things start to break, like the hammer, sears. I have a new trigger on the way that's coming. Um, and then when I decide to spend way too much money and get, you know, like the steel parts, like the slide release safety and then grip safety. Um, let's start it off. The most noticeable thing this is the Airsoft Masterpiece. This is the Edge Mega Slide. Um, pretty much the newer version of the old nano slide that came out a few years ago Not gonna lie. I'm not a huge fan of how this slide looks The serrations don't make any sense. Your fingers just slip right off of them front and back Like it's, it's actually like ripped really hard to get it to actually do what you want um, I think the older nano slides look better. They also had a cut out here the serrations were cut normal how you would expect them to be on a gun. Um, that being said, I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite slide. I kind of wish I went for a full slide instead of this one now, but you live and you learn. Um, but moving on, obviously I got this in silver. The, the, the color scheme for this one I was planning on doing was basically silver and purple and black for the stuff that I can't get silver or purple. Um, and I think that looks like really cool. I think that's a nice color combination to go with. So I decided to go with it and I'm, I'm liking it so far. Definitely need more silver on the gun. Most of the lower is still black other than the grip screws and the hammer, but everything needs to be changed out with either purple or silver stuff. Let's see. The sights on, stock, on top are stock. The uh, outer barrel, this is one of the Airsoft Masterpiece aluminum barrels, and it is threaded as well, so you can mount tracers and mock suppressors if you ever do that. Um, one of me use for a tracer for when I play indoors. Um, I really like this barrel actually. It's not bad. It's super light, so the gun's not crazy heavy at all. Um, with the older, with the steel barrels, like the Cow Cow ones or the older UAC ones, same thing. Um, they're super heavy, and when you actually start to do a lightweight blowback housing or an aluminum frame, then the barrel kind of weighs down the front end of the gun, which makes it kind of uh, feel weird to hold. So this barrel right here being aluminum and being probably one-fifth that weight, it's really, really nice. And it's nice quality aluminum. I don't see it breaking. I don't see outer barrels breaking in general usually. Um, since the threads are metal still too, not a huge deal. But I like it. And also since it comes in cool colors, the steel ones don't come in this color, which is why I wanted the aluminum one. And you can't find the steel ones anywhere. Gotta love it. Um, let's see. Moving on to the inside of the gun. If you look in there, you'll see that I'm running the, what is that, the Cow Cow? Yeah, the Cow Cow Short Shirt Kit. I only have three in there because getting four in there is really hard with a full length guide rock plug. If I were to get a four three length guide rock plug or do some super convoluted thing, I could totally fit four, but I'm happy with three. I don't really need four. It's damn near short stroke to the max already. It's just a little bit past where the gun can still come apart. And I'm a big fan of that. I really like short stroking. I've never had a high cap lock back in God knows how long. I just like the feeling of short stroking. Plus, I am running it on HPA with the primary adapt primary airsoft M4 mech adapter, so it wouldn't lock back anyway. So short stroking is the way to go if you want it to be nice and quick. Moving on, the mid frame here is actually a nine ball one. I got rid of the Maru one because I don't like the Maru ones a whole lot. And it was a standard 5-1 length one, so or a standard 5-1 one, so it didn't have a rail. It was this ugly gray color. It wasn't even black. They're like a gray, and I'm not a fan of them. They're pot metal. Not a big fan of those things. Um, I 
do like the nine ball frames. I think they look really nice. They are kind of a pain to actually install. They're not a drop on fit. Like I think they were a couple years ago. So either they did something to their blueprints or their machines or whatever, because these things do not fit like they used to. Um, I did do a lot of work to actually get everything in, especially in the hammer to actually work. Um, fitting the slide was easy. It was just a little wide in the back here. So I took a file and then went at it. Um, other than that, really good fit. Do need to actually lube it because I haven't done that since I put it together. So it sounds a little dry, but no biggie. Um, the one thing I'm not a fan of, and I don't know why this happens, is the slide release is actually loose. This is how it's been since I got the gun. It, it hasn't been any different since I installed the slider. Uh, well, I know the slide wouldn't affect it or the frame. Um, which also causes this slide to move back and forth just like a millimeter. It doesn't change anything, it just bothers me because I know it's there. This could probably be fixed if I had a steel slide lock. This one probably just fits loose in the hole in the hop-up unit, which is weird also because it's stock, um, but whatever, the gun works. Inside, I have a Maple Leaf Decepticon bucking, one of their new 2021 models. So it's like that uh, translucent, transparent, uh, rubber bucking kind of look. It works really, really well. Um, I don't think it's all that different from the old ones. I, I really don't know though. And it grabs onto the nozzle really, really well. So it definitely seals inside the hop unit really well, which is good. It's gonna give you a little, uh, keep your FPS consistent. Make sure your shots aren't going all over the place. I do also have the Maple Leaf hop-up wheel, and which, if you, which just gives you a wider range of adjustment. And then I also have um, the Maple Leaf eye key. So it just pushes down a little more. I'm shooting pretty heavy BBs in this guy. I'm using three twos. Um, that's usually for, that's mainly just for when I'm playing outdoors. Indoors, I'll only run two fives because I'll be running tracers and that's all I want to pay for because heavy tracers are expensive. Um, in the back here, I am running the Airsoft Masterpiece Edge Blowback Housing. Super, super, super light. It's their newest model. I like it a lot, and especially since I can get one in purple, so it kind of matches the barrel. It's the same exact color, which is cool. Uh, stock nozzle for now, I'm probably going to get upgraded with a Garter or an Airsoft Masterpiece one. I think the Airsoft Masterpiece one will probably fit better in this Airsoft Masterpiece Blowback Housing, as the name would permit. Um, but so far it does really well. I think on like 110 PSI, which is just slightly below green gas, it's doing like 330, which is I'm more than happy with. Um, also do in the back here is the AIP, AIP hammer protection pad. These guys here are basically just so that the hammer isn't slapping into the frame over and over again. Um, let me actually grab a frame and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I've explained this in a video before in the last high cap build I did. But just to reiterate, this little piece right here, this little ledge, let me try to focus on it. There we go. Gets constantly smacked by the hammer over and over and over. And then you'll see this start to deform and start to get all messed up. Um, if it deforms too much, it can actually get pressed outwards and then your hammer won't move. So you run into problems. That's what I don't like these hot metal frames. Um, that being said, the nine ball one is aluminum, but they're not CNC'd not like the Airsoft Masterpiece ones. Um, everything in the lower is pretty much stock. Cow Cow or Dynamic Precision Grip, same company. I have stippled it. Let's see if I can get a focus on that too. I have stippled it with my normal texture that I put on everything. Super grippy. Um, I know a lot of my friends have the, like the wraps around it. I'm friends with a lot of anime nerds. So they have all the anime groups and stuff like that. It's getting pretty popular with high kappas. I didn't want to do that. I don't watch anime, so I don't care. I know, Asian guy doesn't watch anime, weird. But I like stippling stuff. I like the texture of stippling. I'm used to the texture of stippling and I get really sweaty, which is gross. So this definitely fits me better. And I like these cow cow grips because they do have a, a double undercut. So you do get a little more comfort out of this one compared to the straight cut of the normal Marui grip. You can see the difference there. Um, I've tried doing undercuts on this frame here and uh, the first time I, or this grip, this first time I ever did that, I uh, cut a hole straight through this, this thing. This thing is super thin, not a fan.
but if you don't care, it's fine. I'm not gonna be running a magnal on this gun, literally because I don't need it. Sure, my gun may look cooler, but I'm never gonna be running normal mags in this gun because this is all I have. So <laughs> don't plan on buying more green gas magazines. Don't plan on running on green gas because HPA is life. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for this gun. I haven't done a whole lot to it yet. I just wanted to do the essentials slide for durability, barrel so I could run a tracer unit, frame so I could run a flashlight. Well, I could have done that on the old one, but I already said I don't like the old frame. They're kind of bad and their attach on rail is stupid looking. And then recoil spring and short stroke and grip. Pretty simple build so far. Um, I'm not gonna dive too deep in this gun. I'm probably not gonna go $1,500 like I've done on past builds. I'd be surprised if I even hit a thousand, but you guys know me in my past videos, I tend to go a little overboard and stuff. Or if you follow my Instagram, you definitely know I go overboard and stuff. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about this high kappa build in particular or anything, on the line, uh, anything that has to do with high kappas, let me know down in the comment section below. I hope to be posting more. Um, I plan on getting into a new hobby soon and you will see about that when I get to it. Um, but yeah, expect more airsoft content again on this channel and hopefully more railgun content as well. Um, ammo is just really expensive, so I don't, I don't haven't been doing it as much. Um, and we'll see you soon when I get into that new hobby as well. Follow my Instagram or my TikTok if you want to watch some gaming content. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.